Do you believe Christopher Wray is a competent director of the FBI? I think Mr. Wray is a person of the highest integrity, for whom I have great admiration, who has extraordinary experience, uh, both as Thank a you. career and so you, prosecutor. Thank you. You certainly don't think he would knowingly give false testimony to this committee, do I you? Sir, I am sure that he would not. Are you aware that uh, Director Ray, a couple of months ago in sworn testimony, implicated you in a sweeping abuse of power? I doubt he would characterize whatever, you, uh, whatever he said in that way. Well, he testified about the school board memo that you issued uh, on October 4th of 2021, uh, in which you mobilized federal law enforcement powers against American parents. Now, of course, you didn't put it quite like that. Uh, instead, you found a pretext, which is stated right here in the first line of the memo. In recent months, there has been a disturbing spike in harassment, intimidation, and threats of violence against school administrators, board members, teachers, and staff. What was your basis for making that claim? I will say again, as I've testified numerous times in response to exactly the same question, that I, I, I saw numerous uh, reports in the press of violence and threats. You saw reports in the press, and so you decided to instigate a nationwide law enforcement initiative? If I may be permitted to answer the question. Please. Uh, numerous reports in the media of violence and threats of violence against school personnel of all kinds. We did, received, you, did you consult we, with the FBI director? We received a letter from the National Association of School Boards reporting. Yes, that letter contained anecdotes. It didn't contain data of an increase. Did you, yes or no, consult with the FBI director before issuing the memo? I don't believe I spoke with the FBI director, no. Why not? Why wouldn't you consult with the FBI director? Because the purpose of the memo as is very clear from the memo, is to ask the FBI to assess the situation, to hold meetings, and to determine whether Mr. this Mr. Attorney was General, you started with a conclusion that there was an increase uh, in threats. Now, if you had bothered to consult with the FBI director, here's what he would have said. This is from his sworn testimony, that he was not aware of any such evidence. So my question to you, sir, sitting here today, is can you substantiate your claim that there was an increase? Of course, there will always be criminal, sporadic criminal activity in all quarters of society, but your claim was there was an increase. Can you substantiate that sitting here today? I can substantiate that by the reports in the press of violence and threats of violence and by the letter sent by representatives of thousands. That's a no. You're giving us anecdotes. I'm asking you if you had data. You also said in your memo uh, that you were committed to using the department's authority and resources to discourage these threats, identify them when they occur, and prosecute them when appropriate. Were there any such prosecutions? The emphasis should be there on when appropriate, and there were no such prosecutions, and that's good news, not bad news. There were no prosecutions, and in fact, Director Ray said there were no arrests, there were no charges. So you have no data to show us that there was any increase. You didn't even bother to consult with the FBI director, and then there were no resulting prosecutions, even though you said that they were coming. So I have to ask you now, in retrospect, was there a compelling law enforcement justification for the memo? I think you're mischaracterizing the memo. The, question, the purpose of the memo was to hold meetings, to open lines of communication with states. So is that vote. a no? Yes or no, was there a compelling law enforcement justification for the memo? I believe there was a, a reason to ask for those contacts to be made with state and local law enforcement. Well, the FBI director disagrees with you. When well, I that's asked not what the FBI director said. Look at it I'm right sorry. here, uh, Mr. Attorney General. When asked, do you have any reason to dispute the conclusion that there was no nationwide law enforcement justification? He said he didn't. Either he didn't see the reports or he didn't see the national. This is a transcript. School. I've sent you this transcript, Mr. Attorney General. So my question is this: Will you retract the memo? And by that I mean issue a formal document to the effect that it is no longer operative. I will not, because there was absolutely nothing wrong with the memo, as I have testified several times already. Even though your own FBI director says there was no justification for it, you will not retract it. The memo is mine. It's my decision whether it's necessary to make assessments like this. And I asked the Bureau to make these assessments and the other- Are you familiar with the concept of a chilling effect? I'm sorry, I didn't- Are hear. you familiar with the concept of a chilling effect? I'm very familiar and that's the very reason- How would you define a chilling effect is, as it relates to First Amendment jurisprudence? That's the very reason why the second sentence of the memo- Please tell me what you do, uh, consider to be the definition of a chilling effect. That memo has no chilling effect. The I didn't ask you your opinion on whether the memo has one. I asked you what is a chilling effect. I'm telling you that the second sentence of that makes clear I've read the full memo. I'm asking you what do you define a chilling effect as? 
A chilling effect is when um, um, people's uh, exercise of First Amendment rights are chilled by coercive activity by the government, which did not occur here. So here we're dealing Mr. with moms and Mr. dads. Mr. Chairman, you and I point of order officials. with respect to the time? Yeah. Point of order? The, the gentleman's time has expired, but it was a pretty darn important question when the Attorney General of the United States can't define what a chilling effect is, so I thought it would let it go a few seconds. The, uh, uh, the Attorney General did define what a chilling effect is and said it didn't occur here. I don't think he defined it. He just, he just dismissed it. Uh, the gentleman's time has expired. I thought it was a very important five minutes. We now recognize